So today we're going to make uh, peg bags for our washing lines. The sun is shining in the UK today and I thought it would be a brilliant opportunity to make myself a new peg bag for my washing line. So I have put together this tutorial for you. There's a free pattern on my website, which is linked in the comments below. It's a really simple three piece pattern. It's suitable for beginners, really easy project to make, very inexpensive on the uh, materials too. So if you are interested in learning how to make one of these, carry on watching. The first thing you're going to need is the paper pattern, which is downloadable from my website, startstitch.com. Uh, it is only three A4 sheets. So when you print it off, it's not too hungry on the paper. And make sure when you print it, that you are printing at 100% in order to get the scale right. Um, there's only one piece that needs joining and that's the uh, back piece. You need to join the lower back to the upper back and at the balance mark here. But other than that, it's a really simple and straightforward pattern to print out and um, deal with. You're also going to need some fabric. Uh, I have two different fabric types here. Um, both of these are interior weight cotton. Uh, this one is a, a better quality cotton canvas. This is a, um, a much cheaper one that's quite prone to fraying, but both of them are a reasonably heavy weight and you need that in order to um, give your bag a bit of integrity and to hold the bulk of basically lots of wooden or, wooden or plastic pegs. It take, the peg bags actually take quite a bit of hammering. So interior weight cotton is good. Um, at a push you could use quilters cotton but I think it's better to use an interior weight curtain cotton um, and it needs to you could use a drill a canvas a twill a denim would work if you wanted to use something that that, that was a bit um, less printy and interior-y um, but anyway so that's those are the options for those you also are going to need a couple of meters well a meter of uh, bias binding. So I've got two different types here. This is just a, um, a, a really cheap, inexpensive one that I got in on bulk for teaching workshops and things. But I bought it on bought it on eBay. So that's the yellow one, which I think goes quite nicely with that cotton. And this is a dressmaking one, um, which I'm going to use with this uh, safari animal print. Both of these are. Um, are nice and wide I would really recommend that you you get a nice wide one um, this is probably about as narrow as you can get as I would recommend um, and ideally you need a good um, a good two 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 to two and a half centimeter wide uh, bias bias strip um, the reason for that is when you if you're working with a really narrow one and once you've folded it in half and you've started to stitch it you don't leave much room above the stitching for the um, bias tape to ho to hold on the opening, which is where we're going to put it. And, and because they take quite a lot of the battering as your hand goes in and out to get the pegs out, you want to make sure that that bias strip is really reinforcing that opening and not it's not just there for decorative purposes, it's there to reinforce the opening and to give your, your bag an opportunity to, to last a reasonable amount of time. The final thing that you're going to need is a coat hanger. Um, this is a children's coat hanger. I bought it in a pound shop, I think. And this pattern has been developed on this style of coat hanger. Um, I'll just give you the measurement of it. It is 29 and a half centimetres uh, wide at the at the the lowest point. So it's a it's a kids coat hanger. It's not an adult coat hanger, um, but these are kind of pretty standard um, pretty standard style of coat hanger and extremely inexpensive to get. Um, I bought I bulk bought them for my own kids wardrobes um, as well, not from the pound shop, and they're absolutely identical and they come in all sorts of different colours. So this is the one that you will be using, um, and as I say. This is what this pattern has been designed to accommodate this uh, coat hanger in terms of seam allowances and the angle of the top. If you get a different coat hanger, then um, just center it on the line. Uh, and you, if you find that it's 
if it's either too wide or it's got a slight angle, centre it on the line of the pattern and then you can just trace around it. Make sure you include your seam allowances, but you can just trace around it in order to make sure that you've adjusted your pattern accordingly. Once you've cut your pattern, you're going to cut your fabric. Um, each of the three pattern pieces are cut on the fold, which is what this double headed arrow line here represents. Um, so when you cut, <clears throat> make sure that this fold line is also your grain line is, is parallel with your salvage. And that way you will ensure that when you open your pieces up from being on the fold, that uh, the pattern is, is running uh, perpendicular to the straight edges as you want them to do and you may also want to give some consideration as to where on the pattern pieces um, the pattern of the, the print of your fabric uh, is placed like I've got this um, fish's head nicely centered up here. Once you've cut out your um, pieces unfold them and you will have three pieces that look like this and the next step is to put bias binding um, in four places. So take your bias tape and you're going to cut a bit that's long enough to go along the straight edge top of the front top and the back top. So it doesn't matter if it's slightly longer because you can trim it once it's stitched. So cut that the right length and fold it in half, edge to edge, and give it a really good press with your fingernail, kind of score it down the middle. This is a um, quite a cheap bias binding that I got um, in bulk on eBay, I think. Um, and as a result, it scores quite nicely. This uh, cotton one will still will still score with a fingernail but might need a bit more assistance it's much better quality cotton so it might need a bit more assistance with a with um with an iron but you should be able to score down the middle of your bias binding with a fingernail quite easily if you don't have fingernails or you have um, sore fingers you can fold it on the table and use the scissors to just score down um, and you just want to make sure that it that your that your bias tape remains edge to edge because in this fold is going to help you stitch in one line so that you catch both sides through all layers of fabric. So once you've done that you can then just slide the top the top edge of your fabric piece into the bias and pin it in place. It's quite a short stretch so I'm just going to put a, one pin in the beginning and one pin at the end but you may wish to also pin in the middle and then do the same thing with this piece here and then the other two places that we are going to put bias and we'll do the same thing by cutting a length that's uh, cutting a piece that's the right length and then scoring it in half is these curved edges. So there's this curved edge here and this curved edge here. I'm going to put bias, pin bias on there and there's nothing else to go on the back piece. So you can put that to one side whilst you put your bias strip on these curves. Before I pin these strips of bias onto the curves, I just want to talk to you about the nature of bias in case you haven't used it before. Because it's cut on the bias of the fabric, which means that the um, threads of the woven fabric are going at a 45 degree um, angle to the salvage. So essentially when, when a strip is cut, it's cut. It's cut at a 45 degree angle like that, which means that the threads are going diagonally. Because of that, um, you're working with the with, with the least stable direction of the fabric, which means that you have um, a, the opportunity to bend and mould with bias with bias binding, especially if you then also apply steamy iron to it. And the great thing about that is it means you can 
apply it to a curve and it will stay nice uh, and flat. So it works really well on these curved openings here because as you can see, you can still get it nice and nice and flat, no gaping, nothing like that. But it gives you a lovely crisp sharp edge. So I'm going to pin both of these in place and then I'm going to go and top stitch all of them on the machine. You can you can top stitch with a straight line of stitching, which is what I'll probably do. You could use some decorative stitching if you have that capability on your machine. If you're at all unsure, um, then uh, a zigzag stitch is a really good option. But the thing that you really need to try and do is stay close to this open edge, not the folded edge, but this open edge as possible. So you're stitching as close to the bottom here as you can get and the same on this side as close to the bottom as you can get um, and on this one it will be as close to the top edge because the folded edge is on the bottom it's reverse of what's going on here so I'm going to do a straight line of stitching that just follows that all the way and a straight line of stitching that follows that line all the way and the same again there and the same again on the back and then I'll show you what to do next so here I am back with my um, bias binding stitched in place. You can see I've used a slightly darker thread just so that you can see what I mean about the the, the stitching being closer to the edge of the um, of the bias strip and not to the folded part of the bias strip on the inside of the opening. So I have pressed it, stitched it in place, and given it a good steamy press, and then trimmed all of the ends so that it's nice and um, smooth and finished. And now we are going to assemble the peg bag. So the first thing you're going to do is put the back section face up on the table in front of you. You're then going to take your top section, line that up at the top and at the shoulders of the bag face down. And then take your front lower section and line that up in the bottom corners. And what you'll end up with is the two pieces overlapping at the sides here by about an inch and a half or um, sort of three to four centimetres. That's really important because basically what that means is when this is um, turned through, the front section is going to prevent the the top section is going to prevent the lower section from sort of bagging out and all your pegs just kind of hanging forward in your bag it's going to keep it nice and contained as it hang and central as it hangs on the hanger so once you've got those all nicely lined up pin them in place but pay special attention to this overlap here so i always start with two pins where the um where the overlap happens to get that to get that nice and secure like this and then if you're using a stable fabric you don't need to use huge quantities of pins from then onwards really you just want to pop one in the top there and in the top there and then probably one either side and then again I'm just going to put one in the middle at the bottom and that should have it have it pretty nice and fixed and you are going to stitch all the way around from this um, top edge here all the way around I would like you to ideally go backwards and forwards here so pivot and go backwards and forwards here just once to reinforce this because this this is going to get a lot of pulling so just reinforce this by going over it a couple of times down here backwards and forwards then down and round and round and up and then backwards and forwards here again and then back round to the top and leave this bit open because that's where the top of your hanger is going to be once you've done that line of stitching you can finish the inside with a zigger stitch or an overlocker um, and the seam allowance is one one centimeter but if you go slightly larger than that 
um, it's not going to be too much of a bother. Basically, you want to make sure that your hanger will still fit inside. So you've probably got up to one and a half centimetres, but don't go any bigger than that. Um, and as I say, you can finish the inside once you've stitched it with uh, an overlocker just to reinforce it and neaten it up. So I've stitched all of that together and I have overlocked around the edge. Um, I'm just going to use a darning needle to pull the end of the overlocking stitch, the threads, back through the chain on the... Um, on the peg bag like that so that that neatens it off and stops it fraying at the top and give it a little trim and then you're ready to turn it through so you just need to turn the whole thing through push it right out in the corners and then again at the top sure it's nicely pushed out in the corners there run your finger right inside it once you've turned it through take it to the ironing board and give it a bit of a press so once I've turned it through and pressed it the last thing you need to do is just slide your coat hanger into the top section there and then you have a really beautifully finished, ready to gift, ready to use pig bag. Uh, if you like this video, check out my other tutorials. I have a few on my channel here um, and like the video and subscribe to the channel for new tutorials. There are some really exciting ones coming. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about sewing, check out my online courses at academy.startstitch.com. I will link that down below. Uh, and thank you for watching. If you do make a peg bag, please do tag me on social. I love to see the um, the finished results of some of these freebies that I make for people. It makes me feel really, really happy. And um, also, if you want to join a really brilliant and uplifting social community, then Kerno Social is the group for you. I will also tag that down below. But in the meantime, have fun sewing. <laughs>